Okay, you just got your MCAT score back, and unfortunately, it is not what you expected. What do you do now? If you're new here, my name is Dr. Adam Nessum. I'm the founder of the Pre-Med Consultants, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about what to do if you have an unfortunate MCAT score. And the first thing I want you to do is take a deep breath, okay? Do it with me. <sighs> I promise it's going to be okay. As much as you worked hard, you waited for this moment, you thought you were going to do well, if it doesn't come to fruition, if it's the first time, the second time, even the third time, it's not the end of the world for you. I know this is super hard to see and nobody likes to see a score they feel like they didn't deserve. And I don't want that for you either, but you're still an amazing person. It's going to be okay. And you can still get into medical school. I promise you. I have personally worked with students who have gotten under a 500 and still got accepted to medical school. Now I know a bad score for everyone, maybe a little different, right? Some people might have seen a 510 and they were upset, whereas others might have seen a 502 and they were upset. It varies for every person. Of course, you know where you were scoring on your practice test and where you wanted to be around. So the question becomes, okay, did you just take the MCAT right before you were about to apply to medical school? If so, is it worth either retaking the test? Should you delay a cycle? Well, that's going to be variable to each individual. So I'll go over a couple of different circumstances, but if you really want more personalized advice, I suggest you click the link below and schedule a call with myself or someone from my team. We'll be able to see exactly what you need to do. But for most people, let's say you are in May and June and you just took the MCAT and you got the score back and you're literally about to apply and it's much lower than where you'd like it to be. It might not be the end of the world to hold off an application cycle. And the reason being is one, you don't want to apply super late into the application cycle. And you also don't want to rush to take the MCAT again, only to get another score that you're not happy with. So if you are already late into the cycle, then honestly, taking an extra year will not be the end of the world. I promise you. Many Students start medical school in their mid-20s, sometimes their late 20s, even 30s or 40s. You will not be the oldest person ever to go through medical school. And one more year that you can enjoy and make sure your application is good is not the end of the world. Now, if you are a little bit earlier into the cycle, let's say it's still April and you just got your score, can you study and take like a mid-June test date, get your score back in July and be good to apply and still technically be early enough where it's not going to hurt you? Yes, you can. So the question becomes, why did you not score well? Well, did you just have a bad testing day and maybe you really just need to take it again, freshen up for a month or two months of studying and you're good to go? Or did you truly never have good scores in your practice test and you were kind of hoping for a fluke good score and really you need to go back to the drawing board, figure out what you were doing right with your studying and what you were doing wrong, how you can improve. So for example, and we teach us in our MCAT program, we're using space repetition to memorize the information. We're using active recall. Were you testing yourselves with lots and lots of practice questions and doing all the AMC practice materials? Well, if you haven't done this, you need to go back and do all of this before being ready to take the MCAT. And so if you can get that done in time by this application cycle, that's great. And if you have to wait an extra year, that's okay too. Again, it's not the end of the world if you take an extra year. I know it feels that way. It's maybe you have pressure from your parents and they're saying that it's the end of the world. Take it from someone who's mentored literally hundreds, if not thousands of students personally. It is okay to take that extra year. Also, some people think their scores are not good when they're actually good, right? I know some overachieving students and a lot of pre-meds are overachievers in type A where they've got a 512 and because all their practice scores were 518, they feel like this is not good enough and they want to retake it and apply to medical school. Now you can retake it for sure, but you could also still apply with that score and get into medical school for sure. So I wouldn't put too much pressure on yourself. If you're at the margins, I wouldn't worry about retaking it. Let's say if you really are scoring like 518, 520 on all your practice and you get a 510. Yeah. For that type of student, you could retake it. But if you're scoring 514, that was your highest score on your practice test and you got a 512 on test day. Should you retake it? I would really just apply with that score and you should be proud of that score. That's a really good score as well, okay? So there's, a, again, a lot of variables that go into making this decision. If you did badly on your test, so you know, let's say you got below 500 or low 500, you know you could do a lot better. I would definitely recommend retaking that MCAT, maybe figure out why you didn't do well. Again, if you need free resources, you can actually, I'll also link below. We have a free MCAT Kickstarter course that talks about exactly how to study properly for the MCAT. And you should take the time, 
do what you need to do that's best for you in your specific circumstance. Don't let all these other outside influences affect your decision. You, you, you're an adult at this stage in your career. You need to figure out what's best for you. If you need help, feel free to reach out. You can also message me on Instagram. I respond to messages there. And once again, if you did bad on the MCAT, it's going to be okay. I promise it is. All right, that's all for this video. If you're enjoying this pre-med advising and want to see more, then like and subscribe. Really subscribe. We're putting out lots of content for the pre-med consultants this year, and I'll see you in the next one.